Hello and welcome back to Boxing Social in association with Betfred. My name is Eamon My name is Eamon Khan. We're here in London Box Park Wembley to be exact. With me is the one and only Adam Smith. Uh, we are here for Richard Riak Paul versus Dion Juma. Cruiserweight action this weekend. First of all, Adam, how's life treating you? Yeah, very good, Eamon. Very excited about uh, this weekend at Wembley. Uh, Richard Riak for um, a fighter we've uh, got right behind. He's uh, Got a cracking backstory, fantastic um, the way he's turned his life around through boxing. Uh, he's unbeaten, he's got real power, he looks the part, he's yeah, synonymous now with Crystal Palace. There's lots to go out with Richard. Um, and he was going to fight uh, Fabio Turchi, as you know, which would have been a good step up for him. And Fabio was injured. And on this sort of chief support, Mikel Lawal was going to fight uh, Dion Juma. Mikel out for COVID. I saw him the other day. He's recovering well. Uh, but it made perfect sense for us to really push the React Board Juma fight. They're uh, old rivals. They've known about each other for a long time. They've sparred together. They've had different sort of careers. A bit stop start, but especially Dion. Um, but I think that they're always going to fight at some point. Both undefeated. I think it's a cracking main event. And I think it's a dangerous fight for the pair of them. So look, I'm really pleased that they accepted it at fairly short notice. And I think the uh, the fans and the Sky customers are the winners. We've got a great man event. Richard is an interesting proposition, I think, as a fighter and in terms of kind of as a broad, uh, broadcaster type of fighter, given his story, given the potential that he has. To, in terms of him as a Sky Sports boxing project, how far do you think he is away from getting a world title and getting over the line to kind of complete that story? You're absolutely right. He's a wonderful story, Richard Reakpour, and an inspiration to, to many, uh, many young out there. And I think that, look, if he continues to, to win and look impressive, he's very close to a world title shot whether it's a Lawrence Ocoli or one of the other champions, but I think that, that Richard will deserve that if he can get past Tumor and whether it's the next fight or maybe one more, but certainly this year, I think he should be knocking at that world title door. Um, but Dion Juma is a good fighter. You know, he believes he got the better of Richard Riappor in sparring and uh, he'll fancy his chances of causing what will be a mini upset, but you know, he's, he's not had the sort of the spotlight that Richard's had or probably the hard professional fights, but a very good amateur and he's got lots of ability. It's whether Dion could put that together on that night under the lights. That's the big question mark over Dion. We know Richard can, uh, but it's a really good fight. So let's just see what happens on Saturday before we sort of get too carried away with uh, with world titles and everything else. But uh, no, we're behind Richard Riappor. He's, uh, as I say, a massively great advert for, for British sport. And uh, look, but if Dion Juma comes in and, um, and upsets him, then uh, let's see where Dion could go. So it's fantastic. And I think what's great about it is that both of them could put their undefeated record on the line. And a loss doesn't matter. They'll both come back from it. And uh, I think it's really good that the fans are getting the, the best clashes, which uh, this is one of them. A variety of different fighters on the undercard as well. Uh, lots of young talent come through, which seems to be the boxer and Sky Sports push. Caroline Dubois, the Azim brothers who've been sparkling. Uh, talk to me about what takes your eye on the undercard. Yeah, we're building a stable, you know, and I, I said to Ben and that this is a project. This is a you know longer term sort of role rather than a short term fix. We had a fantastic February with some big names. That's a chance to get the young uh, starlets out, the Caroline Dubois, the Adam Azims, who we really believe in. We really believe they're going to go a long way, but you can't jump from one or two fight straight into a world title it's tough um, maybe Caroline will want to push us a bit quicker but and Adam says he wants to be a world champion really fast but ultimately he's got a good step up here against Conor Marsden southern area champion that's the right fight for him it's all about matchmaking well it's about developing well it's about telling the story getting them the right exposure and keeping them fighting you know different styles so that when they get there their bigger opportunities at higher levels they're ready for it um, and it's difficult because you know Eddie and Matchroom they all went to the zone so we've had to build a game from scratch we've got some more you know seasoned fighters the likes of Tasha Jonas and Savannah Marshall Huey Fury many others but we've also got this young crop of talent and they need to be fighting and they need to be fighting regularly so uh, I'm really pleased like Adams did a very very good match uh, his brother Hassan's on the card as well we've got Joe Pigford who's unbeaten Shannon Ryan turns pro you know you look at behind you you know it's, it's a who's who Zach Chelly Jimmy Lee's very interesting as well you know really really good amateur standout and uh, you know, he believes he can go a long way in the sport so yeah, we're, we're going to get behind them all and uh, make sure that they all develop at their own pace but also try and give as 
you know, good quality of matchups as we can. And that's why I'm really pleased about this show. We haven't got the, the huge names that we have with the Khan Brooks and the Eubanks and the and the Josh Taylors. But what we have got is Riyad Porjuma. We've got Dan Aziz against the guy that beat him in the amateurs, Matthew Tinker, who he said to me, Dan, the other day, he pasted me. So, listen, Matthew's been in America. Not many people know about him as a pro, but he was a fantastic amateur. He's undefeated. He gets a great opportunity. And then you've got Adam in a step up too. I think they're three really good sort of main fights. You've got an English welterweight title fight as well, which is a pick'em. You've got Caroline Dubois, you know, Hassan Azim, and as I said, all the others. I think it's a really good show. And uh, I'm really pleased that, that the fighters have accepted it and that Ben has uh, delivered what I wanted. And you bring up a good point there about kind of long-term uh, planning there. Do you think with what you're building with Sky Sports and Boxer, in terms of short-term propositions for customers, long-term propositions for customers, you've got the right balance there of what you can put out on offer for them? I think so, yeah. I think there should be the odd Sky Sports bo box office. I always call them sparkling nights, big nights, blockbuster nights, something with a bit of difference. Uh, I think that, you know, There'll be, there'll be those when, when, as and when we need them. They're, they're obviously, the likes of Anthony Joshua have been, and we just had recently Khan and Brooke, and we'll see where the next one comes from. But then I want really, really good big fights on Sky Sports. That's important. Sort of more developmental, hard trade core fights. We got a lot of criticism, actually, for undercards um, in, in, the, in, in February, whereas actually we saw the main events as being incredible. But we listen to everything, and I think Ben's coming amazingly far in, in, in six, eight, month, eight months of working with Sky. He had a base, obviously, with the tournament shows, but he's come on to a much bigger level. I think he's done fantastically what, what he's delivered. Top ranker delivered already with Taylor Cattrall and, and will deliver more, and they've delivered with a lot of global stuff coming in through the night, fantastic fights, and many more to come this year. So it's a great sort of dual deal. Um, and I think that, look, we, we've got the tournament shows coming back. So this is a period where we're going to show some more de developmental sort of trade, very good matches, 55-45s or 50-50 we can, those sort of matches where maybe we're criticised a bit in February, I think you'll see better sort of solid shows, maybe with not the, the stardust names on quite at the moment as we develop them. But we've got Savannah Marshall next week in a world title fight, we're so excited about Savannah. Florian Marku against Chris Jenkins is a cracking chief support, Nathan Gorman as well. It's a fantastic night in Newcastle, so a couple back-to-back. -back. Then we got a week off. I'm actually back on the darts. And then the week after that is the tournament show in Coventry. And um, I said to Ben, we need to get these tournament shows rolling again. And he's delivered a couple. So uh, I'm pretty pleased with my partner at the moment. <laughs> In terms of kind of, as like I said, as customers, as fans, uh, this weekend there's a clash. I know you're not one to be drawn into tit for tat and we were first or whatever like that, but in terms of the battle for viewership, the eyes of the viewers, you've got the double header here with Rakpo Juma and then you've got um, Bachel and Nakatila. How confident are you to be able to win the fans' viewership at the weekend over, what, over the clash? I don't think necessarily it's winning. It's all about the fact that we want to give our Sky customers the best we can. So we've got a top rank show coming in, we've got a, a boxer show coming in, plenty for them to get excited about, as well as the, the whole host of other things on Sky Sports. Um, but look, I'm a Josh Warrington fan, I'm a Kiko Martinez fan. You know, I'm going to find a way to try and sneak a little look at that. If it's not live, certainly, you know, in the, in the hours afterwards. It's a shame that we're up against each other. Occasionally these clashes happen um, through no fault of anybody's. Venues are booked. It takes, you know, springtime. It's tough to, to book venues. I know this was booked a long time ago, the Wembley Arena, and, and we go with what we've got on Sky. and we'll, We're right behind it, but I'm not going to sit here and say that I'm not looking forward to Josh Warrington and Kiko Martinez, just like I really enjoyed Lee Wood and Mick Conlon, and I can't wait for Katie Taylor and Amanda Serrano. There's great fights on the zone. Channel 5 now with, with Wasserman, and Wasserman worked with us on Chris Eubank. You know, BT are coming again with all sorts. You've got back here at the stadium for, for Tyson Fury and, and Dillian White. You know, we want to be want to be around it. Even if we're not doing it, we want to be around it. But I'm really pleased with where Sky and Boxer have come in a short period of time. I think February proves what we're capable of. And I think we're going to go from strength to strength and look out for some uh, big news, big announcements soon as we uh, continue to stay in our lane, build slowly, and do what we can for our Sky customers uh, as best as we can. We can't have everything. We don't have everything. Eddie Hearn's a fantastic promoter over on the zone. Frank Warren's a brilliant promoter on BT. That's great. Competition's healthy. 
Um, we're, uh, we're, we're getting back. We're getting back and we're really excited about it. A few more things for me. Let's look at the heavyweights, starting off with maybe the two biggest figures, that being Anthony Joshua and Alexander Usyk, the rematch. Looks like we're going through some form of, uh, form of direction with uh, developments that are happening. Obviously, there are bigger things in the equation there, though, Adam, but that means that there's a movement towards, hopefully, some sort of announcement regarding his broadcast situation. I know you've said in the past that there's a lot of moving parts with that too, but can you give us any kind of updates as to where that stands? Well, there's a great deal of moving parts, and obviously our hearts and our thoughts at the moment are, are with Ukraine, and the fact that the fighters have been, you know, Vitaly, Vladimir on the front line, it's extraordinary, it's, it's amazing to see, and the, the love of their country, and, you know, we want, obviously it's a humanitarian situation in the world, and... Everybody wants that as calm and as peaceful as possible, as quickly as possible, and, and the fighters have to make their decisions. Vasily Lomachenko and Alexander Usyk were back in the Ukraine. Um, I believe that the senior ministers have said that they would like them to go out and fight and spread the good word of Ukraine and get back to their careers. I think, from what I understand, Vasily is staying in the Ukraine, but Alexander might well uh, come back, and if he does, we welcome him back. And. Uh, and Anthony will go straight into that fight, which is what Anthony Joshua is all about, taking the big fights, trying to get his belts back. And whether he should or could have had an interim fight, maybe that would have been useful with, with Angel. It looks like he's going to go straight back into the fire. Obviously, as you say, there's a lot of uh, things happening, a lot of moving parts, spinning plates, uh, as well as our, our broadcast deal with Anthony. It obviously came to an end after the Usyk fight, the first one. I'm very confident we'll uh, stay with Anthony Joshua, always have been. I think we're very good for each other. I think he loves Sky and the brand and the platform, and we love having him. He's been a great ambassador, and uh, long may that continue, hopefully, to the end of his career. So negotiations going on behind the scenes in both parts, and hopefully there'll be announcements uh, on both parts pretty soon. Two final things from me. Sure. Ben, ben mentioned that you and you and him were working on, in the wake of uh, the Taylor Catchall uh, controversy, working on proposals to put forward to the board. Where are you with those proposals that you're working on? Yeah, I think first and foremost, we've got to say the British board are the best in the business. They've been fantastic for so many years. Uh, but Robert said he's willing to, you know, to listen to what other people have got to say. And Ben and I feel very strongly about what happened in Glasgow. Um, and look, we just want to move the sports, sport, you know, forward in the right way. And um, it's very difficult. You know, judging is subjective. You know, we've got our own unofficial judges, the Matt Macklins, the Carl Frotches, the Dave Caldwells on the, uh, you know, on our, on our team and, and no, no one's right or wrong the whole time and everyone's got their opinion. Um, but I think if there's anything we can do to move it forward and, and make sure that the best decisions can be made, uh, it's great whether that's technology or different, you know, different sort of thoughts and views going forward or how we can all work together, then we'll do that. So Ben and I are um, looking into things behind the scenes and um, yeah, we'll let you know about it pretty soon. Final question, if we yeah. just squeak this in. Uh, Amir Khan, the contractually ob obligated rematch, if he takes that, from your knowledge, are Sky Sports obligated to broadcast that, the rematch? Look, look I think that what happened on, uh, you know, on February the 19th in, in Manchester was a fantastic sort of, in many ways, a climax to a, a story that's rolled on for 20 years. Uh, I wonder whether there would be a rematch beforehand if it was a close fight. I thought the narrative sort of lent itself to it, but I think because it was an emphatic Kelbrook victory and, and Amir went out on his shield and his bottle was fantastic, his heart was brilliant. Um, you know, I thought the way he said after us and the respect, I thought that he'd probably sail into the sunset and go and do other things with his life. He's such a popular figure in the world and, and Kel, of course, has got his decisions too. So look, it's up to the two fighters what they want to do. I believe Amir does want to fight again. Uh, whether he'll want to fight that he can definitely win and go out on like that or, or whether he's got more ambition, we have to wait and see. Um, I think it'll be a difficult fight to go again with, um, to be honest. I think that um, we've done it. I think it was a, a brilliant success. Um, and I think that uh, Kel Brook can go on or, or can call it a day. It's up to him. Same with Amir. They both owe us nothing. They've both been fantastic for the sport. And um, I think it's better to ask them what they want to do. But uh, you know, we'll support them in, uh, in, in their decisions as, uh, you know, as we have all the way through. And we have nothing but respect for the pair of them. Adam, thanks for speaking to Box and Social. All the best. Uh, looking forward to the press conference. Thank you.